In this exercise, we're going to work on creating Bezier curves. First, I'd like to talk to you briefly about why a Bezier curve is called a Bezier curve. They were named for Pierre Bezier, who was an engineer in the 20th century for the Renault Car Company. He refined a practice developed by Paul Castillo of using a math formula to indicate how to bend steel for the automotive body shapes. Um, he added these handles that were uh, like pressure points to allow the steel to bend smoothly. Lucky for us, the name was given, his name was given, Pierre Bezier was given his name to the curve shape instead of the Castillo name, which is a little bit harder to say. So if someone ever refers to a Bezier curve, you'll know where the name came from and what they're talking about. And that's this kind of a curve. So we're going to start by getting our pen tool. Um, I want to turn off viewing my smart guides. I think that's going to be a bit of a handicap for this particular lesson, a hindrance for us. Now, I'm not going to draw on this area up here yet. I'm going to do a lot of practice down at the bottom first. So I'm going to move my screen up a little bit just to make sure you'll be able to see all of it on the video here. And I'm going to make a simple um, action here where I don't click my mouse to begin a curve. Instead, you push the mouse button down. I call it set it, keeping your finger pressed down on the mouse, and you slide in the direction you would like the curve to head. I would like this curve to be a bump like an upside down U, so I'm going to slide up because I want the curve to head in an upward fashion. Then I release my mouse button. Now, I'm going to come over a distance away from where I started on the same level as where I started, which was that square there. I'm going to come over here a short distance, hold my mouse button down, press it down, and slide down because this curve is going to end in a downward fashion. So if you um, hold your command key down on a Macintosh or a control key down on Windows and click off of it, you'll see the curve started heading in an upward fashion, it ended heading in a downward fashion. And that's why I pulled in those directions. To repeat that, I'll come down here below it and do another one just like it. I'm going to set my mouse button down and slide up, release the mouse button, come over here in line with the starting point, set my mouse button down and slide down. I call this set and slide. It's not a click process because clicks are going to give you straight segments. When you're working with curves, you need to slide. I'm going to disconnect from that again by using my command or control key and clicking on nothing, and I'll do another one underneath it. I'm set and slide up, release the mouse, come over here to where I want to end, set and slide down. Now notice while I'm working on it, you can see these unusual blue dots and lines. Those are direction lines and direction points. I'm going to hold my command key down to release from that and I'm going to go get the direct selection tool and show you how those work. If you click on the path you created, that little curve there, you'll see that you have an anchor point at each end. Those are square dots. If it's clicked on, it's selected and you can move it. So I can make my curve wider or narrower. If you click on it also, you will see the direction lines showing that indicate the flow or the lay of the curve. So right now this curve is heading in an upward fashion, the line's going straight up. But if I tilted it to an angle like this, it changes the shape of the curve. You can do that to either the, uh, there's one on the heading into the curve, there's one as it heads out of the curve, and there's one, this one would go to the next curve if we were going to go on to another curve. So there's actually three ways to modify a curve after you've created it. You use the direct selection tool, you can move the anchor point, you can move the direction point, lengthen it or shorten it, change the lay of it, or you can grab the hump of the curve itself and change the lay of it, the height of it. You could even turn it to an upside down curve. So those are ways to modify a curve. It's really easy to fix a curve if it's not perfect your first time. But let's go back to drawing a few more curves. I'm going to click to deselect. Then I'm going to go get my pen tool again. This time I'm going to draw curves that head down. So I'm going to set my mouse button down and slide down. And then come over here and set my mouse button down and slide up. So now this is more of a U shape. I'm going to control or command click on nothing so nothing's selected. I'll do another one here. Set down and slide down. Then set and slide up. And to disconnect from that art, I'll click on nothing again. If I want to draw side ones, 
I'm going to set and slide to the right to form a curve that heads off to the right. Then I'm going to end it by sliding in the opposite direction back this way. And again, deselect by clicking on nothing with either the command or the control key down. I'll make another one. This time I'm going to try harder to stay in line. And if you want it to be really rigid or really straight on the sides, you can actually hold the shift key down while you're pulling the direction handle out. I'm going to set my I'm going to try to stay in line with it here. Hold my shift key down while I pull to the left. And I'm going to pull try to pull the same distance so those blue direction dots on the right side match when they line up and it's going to give me a more perfectly shaped curve if you're into that sort of thing a little bit nicer roundness to it than the one I had before. If I want to do one in the opposite direction, I'm going to set and slide left this time, so it'll go off in a left fashion. Come back over here, set and slide to the right. Disconnect from it by clicking on nothing. Set and slide to the left. Set and slide to the right to end up with it, and I'm going to click on nothing. So, those are my little practice curves. And maybe, you know, this, this took me a long time to learn, so don't be impatient with yourself. I mean a long time, a lot of practice. I'm going to come up here now and do the one that they'd like us to do for the lesson. So on your activity, you'll probably have several of these around here, and as long as they're not in the way of this one, you'll be fine. To create this one here, our big one up at the top, we're going to go to the big blue square where they want us to start. Notice my mouse has the star next to it to indicate I'm starting new art. I'm not connecting to re any of these down here. I'm going to set and slide up, and I'm going to go slightly taller than I want the arc to be, and then release my mouse, come over to the end, set and slide down, pull down, and I'm going to on purpose make this a little crooked, just so I can show you again, if yours doesn't come out perfect, how we fix it. Whoops, I forgot to disconnect. Hold my command key down or control key down and click on nothing. Go get my direct selection tool, my white arrow tool, click on the pieces. I want to have these about the same height. If the placement's off a little bit, I can move it around. If I want to shorten one, if one's too low and I need to pull it up higher, you can do all that fixing. If the dots disappear, just go back and reselect that end that you want to work with. And what I need you to hand in for this part of the lesson is one perfect arch like this. I'd like to see some more samples across the bottom so I know that you've played with it. And that's the one we're doing for this particular lesson here, which was on Bezier Curves.